I have dedicated most of my life to finding new techniques in the discovery and tracing of small molecules and compounds to better understand medicine and physiology. And I think history has taught us that often when presenting new ideas to communities, one can be met with hesitancy, skepticism, and even hostility. Luckily for me, I had a partner, a man who joined me in this scientific adventure, and together we gave birth to and nurtured these radical ideas that eventually caught on. But I doubt the ultimate acceptance of these ideas would have been possible without Dr. Burson. Saul. I'm sorry? You can call me Saul. Oh, Roz, <laughs> nice to meet you. Dr. Strauss sent me down here to take a look at your work. I, I would have gotten here sooner. I must have passed by your room five times before I realized this was you. I've never seen a scientist work out of a janitor's closet before. Well, when life gives you lemons. May I? Uh, sure. Uh, the process is rooted in my training and understanding of radioisotopes. Uh, the Bronx VA is one of the few medical centers to back this kind of radioisotopic methodology paired with hydrodynamic flow chromatographic electrophoresis. And what was your area of study? Internal medicine. I see. Uh, basically, when you bind gamma radioactive isotopes with known quantities of antigen, it may become possible to detect extremely small bloodborne molecules. Like insulin? That's right. Hey, Mary, I think we should postpone the Boston trip. Something big just came up. Through the years, Saul and I together, and now I alone, have enjoyed time spent with our professional children. The young investigators who trained in our lab and who are now scattered throughout the world. It's important to ensure that discoveries like ours are not the last and that we continue to cultivate and nurture these radical ideas that may one day not just be instrumental in the understanding, diagnosis, and treatment of diabetes, but the cure. We are really appreciative of the efforts and the expertise of individuals like Rosalind Yalo, who did this trailblazing work with diabetes and insulin and kind of set the stage for the work that we're doing now. I recall various situations where people would see me and kind of already assume what my trajectory looked like. I recall walking into the guidance counselor's office and university college was off the table. Didn't even want to talk about it. I noticed that your hair is always done. Do you like doing hair? Do you want to become a cosmetologist or something like that? That wasn't where I was headed. As a vascular surgeon, I work with individuals who have diabetes. That could lead you to having a major amputation. I recall a couple of years ago meeting a veteran and his wife and they came to our vascular surgery clinic because of a concern about pain in his foot. I wasn't getting no blood down there. I feel cold as ice, man. All the, I couldn't even sleep. And then I just couldn't take it no more. He could barely walk around. He couldn't go to church with his family. He couldn't do all the things that he wanted to do. We took a look at him and found that he had peripheral artery disease. He also happens to be diabetic. We offered him a minimally invasive procedure to improve his blood flow. Doctor, I love you. Get that surgery on me, man. That saved my life. Thankfully, that was successful, and we were able to prevent a lower extremity amputation in him. Since then, he has been on top of the world. Yeah, I'm 78 years old. I feel great. Black and brown individuals have higher rates of amputation, which is true. What I'm trying to investigate is if there's something that we can do to improve their blood flow and then maybe even save their legs. 
The work that Dr. Brewster is doing is looking at veterans who get to the point where you unfortunately do have to have the major amputation. And he is studying their mesenchymal stem cells so he can develop novel therapeutic agents to treat individuals before the amputation. We know veterans have a higher proportion of diabetes than our non-veteran population. The impact of diabetes on our veterans is huge. Diabetes speeds up our aging, and so our blood vessels get older than our bodies would be otherwise. The risk of not having enough blood flow to heal a wound and the risk of major amputations are very high. We're really dedicated to keeping the limb attached and to doing preservative health. If they do need an amputation, to make that amputated limb as functional as it can be. When a decision has been made for amputation, we collect the tissue that's otherwise discarded at the time of the operation. And we get to look at that muscle, we get to look at the fat, and we get to look at the bone marrow, and then collect those cells look at their regenerative capacity. Are there limitations in the diabetic mesenchymal stem cells? And if there are, can we repair those in culture for delivery back to patients with diabetes as the end goal? These mesenchymal stem cells already know how to repair the body. They already know how to bring in the immune cells that are going to help regenerate the body and all we have to do is get them there in a way that they're ready to work. And if we can do that, you're going to have a game changer in the care of the body because we're basically overriding pathology and bringing regeneration. They're doing this to help veterans behind them to hopefully prevent them losing their legs. Doctor came to me and asked me, would I donate my foot after they amputated to a stem cell. And that, I, I told him, yeah, man, if you can find out, let me know why, so I can look out for my other foot. The day after they released me from the hospital, I drove myself home. I don't want nothing to stop me. That stem cell, that's going to help somebody else. But they don't have to go as far as I had to go. Some of that work that Rosalind Yalo did has now been kind of evolved into the work that Dr. Brewster is doing, we do hope that a lot fewer veterans will lose their legs in the future. Those visions will bring forward innovative ideas and therapies that will push the envelope forward and bring better health care to our veterans.